Welcome to conference. We're taping today from the beautiful Pacific Health and Wellness Center, one of our practitioner rooms you'll be seeing more of. This week we're continuing our studies of why Ashtanga, of all the things you could be dedicating your time and energy to. Why did you choose this method? And also talking about this being a pranic practice and how we're superhero yogis um, seeing, actually seeing prana in our life, seeing energy and making choices around raising the vibration of a situation or a thought. And so continuing with that, I have um, a beautiful uh, yoga teaching today that has to do with our energy and of course what we find on our yoga mats, which is this idea of jivan mukti. Jivan means life and mukti means freedom. And so the definition that I love the most was very simple from Yogapedia said that jivan mukti is a state of being spiritually liberated while still alive. And you know, liberation isn't something that we talk about all the time. Uh, and if we do, we, we talk about it in maybe different terms about our maybe political freedoms or things of this sort. But really, um, for all of us to, to be liberated in, in a moment of our life brings us to a state of contentment and happiness. And, and the great um, yoga text, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, we lovingly call the Gita, talks a lot about this state of liberation and, and how we get to this state. And um, one of the, the main pieces that we learn from this beautiful text is this idea of attachment and yoga being one of the things that can actually help all of us move towards non-attachment. And so if, if I look at this, this philosophical and the spiritual concept of liberation, I want again to put on your, your shtanga and your yoga lenses that look at this through this idea of of energy and and that when we're really um, attached to something we are um, our, our energy is maybe heavy or feels tight or feels dark sometimes and the more we're, we're liberated enough to let go of our attachments to it we feel more freedom and we feel bigger and we feel wider and we feel actually lighter in the energetic world so just to bring these teachings to like our daily life which is the only place they really matter is how we're living our moments I used an example on Sunday uh, with my glasses which I don't have with me now but I just said you know I have these glasses and if I accidentally sit on them right now and break them no big deal I have five other pairs they cost 12 bucks I'm not attached to my glasses but if my glasses cost $200 and they look really cool on me and I thought you thought it was smarter every time I wore these glasses I'd be a little more bummed if I sat on my glasses and broke them so this is just a beautiful simple example of attachment and this idea of um, when I'm attached to something now I have to like um, maybe control a little bit or be you know extra vigilant about something that's like it's precious to me but where does that preciousness start to control us and how can we find ways in our life to love something to love my very expensive glasses and yet not be overly attached to them which brings heaviness into my life and we start to see in the Bhagavad Gita we talk about the kleshas like we become worrisome about these things or they kind of we obsess on the things that we're attached to um, so and I had another beautiful example it's so simple and again I want to just kind of bring this into more how we live the moments of our life and um, this example was with our a smartphone so I was doing a workshop and um, one of the students uh, didn't have their smartphone and thought they misplaced it and so for hours and hours they were looking for the smartphone and and I felt bad and I thought we should all look for the smartphone but we didn't and later that evening um, his his wife calls me and says um, has anyone turned up the smartphone yet and this whole thing I'm like oh I feel so bad I forgot to ask everyone I'll be the first I'm gonna go look in my bag and what do you know there was a smartphone in my bag right where I would put my phone but it wasn't my phone it was his phone and so we it was this great lesson um, I think for any of us to think about like how we feel when we lose our phone because and this is the this the um, the pranic image I want to give all of you we're tethered to things. So I wasn't tethered to my cheap glasses, but I was more tethered to my expensive glasses. And I'm very tethered, as all of us, even as a yoga teacher, to my phone. My phone um, right now can give me the ability to be with someone I love when I have to be here instead and, and make sure that they're okay. And there are many beautiful things about our phones. And at the same time, 
they are controlling us. And, and we're becoming in a, a place where it's like, um, they kind of are dictating our lives a little bit. So again, where do we move into liberation with something that is also so beneficial to us? So the other part of this, and, and I love this part of the story because I'm really telling on myself here, is I had taken his phone. For hours, I felt bad he was looking for it. You can imagine I went from being this big, expansive, inspirational teacher all afternoon and giving facts and information and super smart. And, and then all of a sudden, in one moment, I shrunk to the size of a peanut and I felt like a loser and I felt like a jerk and I kept going through in my mind like all the times I should have looked and you know um, how I made him worry all day and how I felt so terrible about it. I was tethered to my feelings of being a loser and now being this, not the great teacher anymore, but kind of, oh my gosh. So I met them to give the phone back and, and I made my apologies. But when I was driving there, I was going over in my head these teachings of energy and prana and I was saying, Dai, you have to practice what you preach. So how long will you be upset about this? How long will you be tethered to your feelings of guilt and whatever? So I made the decision when I, I got there, I made my apologies, was very genuine. When I got home, I wrote an email to the person that I took the phone from. And I have to be kind of funny about it, but also very genuinely sorry. And at that moment, and I want you to see this, how I was tethered to this, I cut those strings and said, I'm done with this. Hopefully they'll forgive me. Hopefully he'll still think I'm a, a good teacher or whatever. But they couldn't even break those tethers for me. Even if they said, Diana, don't worry, we, we forgive you, it's not a big deal. Even if they tried to break the tethers, I had to be the one that broke those strings between me and my feeling of being a jerk at the time or whatever that was. But isn't it a beautiful example if we all think about that in our life, like we make the choice of what we're tethered to. And the moment that we can choose liberation in any moment, in any situation, is really where our true happiness and contentment comes from. Um, so um, I really want to invite all of you to, to think about this idea of um, how we liberate ourselves in the moments. I want to share with you again the quote by Viktor Frankl we talked about last week because in his quote he talks about freedom. Between stimulus and response there is a space. So between life and our thoughts and responding there is this space we've been talking about. And in that space lies your freedom, Jivan Mukti, and the power to choose your response. And in that response lies your growth and your happiness. That's what this teaching is all about. So I'll finish with this beautiful poem by a Sufi poet named Hafiz. It's called Dropping Keys. The small man builds cages for everyone he knows, while the sage, who has to duck his head when the moon is low, keeps dropping keys all night long for the beautiful, rowdy prisoners. I've memorized that poem because it's so beautiful and important to me. So just to unveil this a little bit, the simpleness, the small man builds cages for everyone he knows. So when I shrink and I'm feeling controlling and heavy, I want everyone around me like I, I, I feel that like I'm, I, I'm kind of small in that way and I make other people small in my mind. But the sage, when we talk about the sage, is so big, so expansive, so liberated, so light that he could even hit his head on the moon. That's what this gives us is it gives us these keys and, and when we liberate ourselves, we want to give the keys to everyone we know we want everyone to be liberated we want to forgive everyone we want to be compassionate to everyone we want to give everyone a little bit of that um, liberation that we feel ourselves so this week you know this is a deep teaching it's um, very philosophical and spiritual and yet it's just the little nuts of our life, the little moments of our life, how we choose to live the smallest moments of our life. So I hopefully this week that you'll see like the tethers. And when you see those tethers clearly that you can make choices around like cutting that. As always, thank you for being part of our extended community and our teachings together. Namaste.